the Grandland video blog for books that came out on April 15th, Tax Day 2009. As always, I'm Craig, your host. We've only got two installments this week. There wasn't a lot to really talk about. It felt like kind of a smallish week really going on. In part one here, we're going to have some Marvel books. Part two, we'll have some DC books and some indie books as well. Um, as always, you can watch us on YouTube, on MySpace, on Facebook, on ProjectFanboy.com, or wherever else we might happen to migrate to as once this gets posted. First up this week, Amazing Spider-Man number 591. Or as I like to call it, the bait and switch. Really? Really, Marvel? I've tried to defend this book through hundreds of thousands of criticisms of slings and arrows of people saying the marriage was better than this. You know, it was a mistake to get rid of the marriage. I've been fighting and saying, look, it's not about the marriage. It's, it's about telling good stories. You know, the secret identity thing's not really important. So then in 590, we get the whole teaser of the secret identity, you know, and we're like, okay, it's going to be good. You know, it's, the first part is good. And then there was this midweek interview where Dan Slott basically said, look, 591 is going to have something that everybody's going to have to deal with. Here I'm thinking, okay, you know, secret identity resolution. We're going to have to figure out why nobody knows Spider-Man's identity. And then here they go, they just gloss it over. It's just, nah, well, you know, we'll just pretend, you know, there's some sort of mental block. Look, I don't do that to Spider-Man a lot. Uh, in fact, I think that's the first time I've thrown a Spider-Man book, but I had to. It's, it was that bad. And yes, the ending is the real part that Dan Slott was talking about when he said, you know, the Marvel Universe will have to deal with the fact that uh, there's a new mayor of New York City. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate the fact that we've jumped forward in time in this issue. But I feel like most of it, with the Fantastic Four uh, story that started in the first part in 590, was just thrown by the wayside just so we could get to a convenient reason to fast forward six months or whatever it was, you know, uh, two months I think it was. You know, just fast forward a couple months and go into something else and then, uh, you know, replace all that election drama and get the new mayor in and ta-da, there we are. Now we, have, now we have a good setting, but we have a bad book that got us there. Much like Brand New Day, One More Day in general. One More Day was a terrible story, but it got us to a good place. We got some good stories. Now we get another bad book that gets us to another new place. I want a good ending to that Fantastic Four story. The first part was so good, the second part deserves to be good, and they just dropped the ball. That's all there is to it. Next up, Captain America number 49. Brubaker continues to just twist at us and play and, and create these crazy ideas in our heads about you know what's going on with Sharon Carter and uh, Sam Wilson. There's really not a lot of Captain America. There's not a lot of uh, Bucky in this book, really. Um, which is okay, you know, we, it's nice to see the, the supporting cast still since we've grown to love them so much and basically the book came, came to be about them after a while uh, yeah. during, the, during the void of, between Steve Rogers and uh, Bucky. So it's nice to see them, but it's just, you know, what are we going to do with them? And it's, it's got the feel of a next issue is going to be a big issue, you know, big important issue because it's Captain America number 50. And then we're going to revert to legacy numbering, and then it's going to be Captain America 600 next month. So we have two big anniversary issues back to back. I, I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go, where that's going to take us, what we're going to do with it. But that's how it's going to go, and, and this just seems like a holding pattern. Things that did rock my mind this week from the Marvel Universe include Wolverine Noir number one. Stuart Moore was not who I expected. Um, I thought, you know, okay, the first one, we had the good writers, we talked about this with the Daredevil Noir, you know, and, the, and then the second uh, tier of Wolverine and Daredevil, it's like, alright, we're just going to put some other writers on it. Stuart Moore was not who I expected, and clearly he should have been on this project from day one, because it is amazing. This is quite possibly the best of all the Noir books that have come out, um, and it sets a very very high watermark for future noir books to reach to. It's 
incredible. You just, it's not just what X-Men Noir was, where it was, you know, all this insidey, jokey, you know, you've got to know who Mariko Yoshida is, you got to know who Creed is, you got to know who, you know, all these different characters are. It's not just about name dropping. It's about telling a fantastic noir story with a detective that just happens to be James Logan, which is an amazing name, uh, much better than James Howlett. But yes, I cannot say enough about this book. This is great. This is quite possibly one of the best books I read this week. Definitely from Marvel. Lastly from Marvel this week, X-Factor number 42. Peter David, after three big cliffhanger, don't spoil it to the internet uh, jokes, decides to give us a preview page, which is hilarious, and basically says, you know, in the next issue, all this is going to happen. Go tell it on the internet. I dare you. <laughs> Which is clearly fake. But anyways, uh, the cast is still fascinating. The, the, these people are still interesting to, to see coexist. Longshot, Madrox, uh, Layla being back is huge for this book. Even though her and Madrox are in the future. I think the spoilers are safe now since you know some of them are three months old and one of them is one month old still. But uh, And Siren and M and Strong Guy and Richter all exist around, you know. This is very interesting where this book is going. I've just recently picked up the X-Factor Visionaries again. I had bought them last year and I sat back down and read them. The Peter David X-Factor Visionaries from back in the, you know, uh, 71 through seven or through 80, whatever, 90, whatever. Uh, that chunk of the X-Men, or of the X-Factor story written by Peter David, when this team had first kind of become X-Factor, you know, uh, it was awesome. It was really good and it had this feel to it, you know. Uh, they didn't always sit around the base and then all go out together. You know, they all kind of existed sort of as a non-team, which is something that uh, Peter David does very well when it comes to team books. Is, you know, these people have lives. They go and they do different things. They go to the grocery store and they buy things and then something happens while they're out at the grocery store so then other people go out and like leave a note or, you know, then those people are sitting around like, well, we'll wait and see if we get called in. Otherwise, oh, something else is going on. We're gonna get distracted, we'll come back. You know, uh, there's multiple plot lines, but it all works well together, which is very nice about this book. Very solid stuff. Not as good as Wolverine Noir, however, which I'm going to hold up just one more time. Get this book uh, or the other cover if you can find it. This cover as well. Uh, I think this cover is better, but still, get this book. It's amazing. It was the hotness. I loved it. It was so good. That's it for this installment for the Marvel books. Stay tuned for part two with some DC and some indie stuff. Thanks for watching.